the story of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. Jesus is still hanging out in Capernaum, and people are still coming to him to hear him speak. One day, he enters into a house, and he's followed by a crowd. A huge crowd. A massively huge crowd. There are so many people in the house that Jesus and his disciples can't even eat lunch. Not because there isn't enough food or time for lunch, but because it is too squished to even move to manage to eat. In the distance, his family heard about these large crowds that gathered around Jesus, and they started to travel to meet Jesus. They weren't coming because they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say, but they were coming because they believed that he must be crazy. His family thought Jesus was crazy because everyone was gathering around him for fun, but Jesus was taking it seriously. They wanted to seize Jesus and bring him home for protection. Back in Capernaum, the Pharisees had a different view of Jesus. They have heard Jesus talk, and they have seen Jesus act, and they knew that he wasn't crazy. They also knew that Jesus was undeniably powerful. So they explained that Jesus' powers were not from God, but they were from the devil. They said, it is by the prince of demons that he is driving out demons. Jesus didn't like being called a demon. So he responded by teaching the truth about what he was really doing. Jesus spoke to them using parables. Parables are stories meant to tell a different point. When the parable is over, we'll see that the Pharisees didn't just miss the point of Jesus' actions, but they missed the point of his words as well. Are you guys wiser than the Pharisees? Can you understand Jesus' parable? Jesus says that any kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, it also cannot stand. Therefore, is Satan attacking himself? Then he cannot stand. Which means that Satan's end is here. Did you get the meaning of the parable? Jesus is saying that not only are his ways different than Satan's, but they are completely opposite. If Jesus is really working for Satan, then the only conclusion is that Satan is experiencing a civil war. And civil wars are always damaging to nations. Satan would have to be growing weaker. If they aren't experiencing this weakening of evil in the world, then their conclusion has to be wrong. And then Jesus tells another parable. This one is much harder to understand, so pay close attention. Jesus says, No one can go into a strong man's house unless he first ties him up. After he is tied up, the strong man's house can be easily robbed. Did you get the meaning this time? Satan is the strong man. And Jesus is the one who robbed Satan's house. We know this is true because Satan's house is being robbed. He's being robbed of the things he values. See, Satan loves diseases, but Jesus is curing the sick. Satan loves controlling people, but Jesus has been setting people free. Satan loves religious control, but Jesus has been showing people the errors of their religious ways. All this means is that Satan is tied up because Jesus is stronger than the devil. Do you understand what Jesus did with these two parables? He demonstrated two things. First, he proved that his family is wrong about him because he is not crazy. Crazy people cannot think as logically as Jesus does. Secondly, he proved that the Pharisees are wrong about him because he isn't doing evil but he's doing good. The story ends with us discovering what all this really means. As Jesus is teaching, his family finally arrives. 
They can't get to Jesus because the crowd is too huge. But the message is passed through the crowd until Jesus hears that his family is waiting outside. But Jesus doesn't invite them in, nor does he go out to greet them. Instead, Jesus looks at the crowd of people around him and he says, You are my family. My family are not those who call me crazy or evil, but my family are those who do the will of God. This means that knowing of Jesus is pointless if you don't know who Jesus is. When you are able to recognize who Jesus really is, then you become part of Jesus' family. Everyone else is just working against Jesus, which means that they are working against God, which means that they are guilty of the unforgivable sin. This is not what Jesus wants. Jesus came down from heaven so that all rebellious children could join his family. He willingly sacrificed his life so that his broken family could be made whole. This is what has been done for you. And that's the story of Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. And it makes me feel loved again.